Hey guys, welcome back to All Booked Up. My name is Adrian, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a review and it is a review of a book that is in a genre that I have read very, very little of. So take that with a grain of salt that I do not know this genre particularly well, but I did really enjoy this book. So today we're gonna to be talking about Emperor, The Gates of Rome by Carna Gordon. Um, this is a uh, Rome, based a roman based uh historical fiction it is following a young roman man called gaius who grows up on uh in a house and on an estate on the outskirts of rome his father julius is a senator um, and we see him growing up along with his friend marcus this very much is a proper historical fiction there is a historical note at the end where Connor gordon talks about where he has um, had to add things that they don't necessarily know existed or didn't like different people to try and sort of fill out the story sometimes he's had to condense or expand historical things that happened to sort of make the story work but generally it seems pretty decently historically accurate the the big events that are happening are definitely events that happened and are events that we um, we follow and we do see in the history books so I think that's particularly interesting. I really enjoyed this as a introduction to historical fiction not having known much about the genre not read any that I can think of really. Um, I do love the Romans I did study history um, until my early 20s and I really enjoyed hi history study. The Romans were something that we did when I was a lot younger but I didn't really revisit uh, when I was a bit older so this was a really nice intro into historical fiction with a culture and a society that I knew enough about but I didn't know everything about so there was still the odd little surprise which was really really nice. So as you can tell by uh, the title it's Emperor is the title of the series and then each of the books has a subtitle so this is The Gates of Rome. So as you expect we are getting to the point where we are following some people who are on the fringe and on the edge of the big goings on in Roman society of this era. So we are following people who are sort of adjacent to the Senate and they know people who are in the Senate, um, they know the consuls um, and yeah I think it's a very interesting setup. We are following Gaius and Marcus from a very young age, I think we start following them around 11-12 um, and by the end of this book they're more like seven, I think they're a bit even a bit older, maybe 20, but they're definitely still young um, but yeah, there's a lot of time covered in this in this first book to get us from sort of their childhood through to their early age adulthood um, as they are starting to make a name for themselves as men, as men who are really working um, their way up in society and I find that particularly interesting. I think the setting we get here is great. I love the way that Conor Gordon brought Roman culture to life and particularly bits of Roman culture that we don't always see depicted so we're talking early on we see this sort of countryside estate that is outside um, of Rome that's not something I often see massively depicted um, in Roman stories so I really enjoyed that as a different uh, a different setting and a different area and a different take on it compared to what we see in lots of depictions of Rome where we get Rome the city itself um, I did enjoy the way he did that and I really enjoyed the character work so I think Gaius is really understandable and relatable maybe a little bit less so than Marcus I actually relate to Marcus a bit more um, I think Marcus was done very well um, and then the side characters that Connor Gordon has are really interesting so there's Renius who is their trainer when they are boys he's particularly well um, written very relatable really enjoyed him as a character even though we're not meant to particularly love him to start with I do enjoy his character I think he's well written as well as that to Brooke who sort of runs this estate while um, Gaius's dad Julius is off into in the city um, working at the senate I love to Brooke I think he's very down to earth a very real character um, and we really get to know him and understand him and see how our main character's perspective on him shifts as they grow up so the way you see Marcus and Gaius think about him early on as children is very different to how they grow up and they see him as they are becoming men themselves and that's true for Renius as well and I think that's really really interesting. Um, I did enjoy some of the um, 
some of the stuff in different areas we get later on with Marcus. I enjoy a little bit wider exploration of the world and we see him rising in rank and I think that's particularly interesting. Whereas Gaius's storyline is much more political and we end up deep in the thick of political intrigue. Um, and I think that's particularly interesting, especially because Gaius is not a big player in this, yeah? He is very much a young man. He's very much dipping his toe in and there are big fish swimming all around him that he's got to watch out for and keep an eye on. If I was to have any complaint with this, it was that actually what felt like the real climax of this book, in many respects, focused heavily on characters we barely knew. So uh, the antagonist, we had known a little bit, but then actually the people we see going against him towards the end are not our main characters, they're not people that we really know and love, and I understand exactly why Connor Gordon's done that, but it did take a little bit of the impact away from it for me. Following that sort of big set piece climax, we did get smaller, important climaxes for our characters, our main characters, and I actually think that was really good. And I think that set us up beautifully for future books and the rest of the books in the series. I also particularly love the way that Conor Gordon played with names, how he played with the names that these men had as children, um, and how, what names they pick up as they became men, and even sometimes hiding surnames that I think is interesting and quite enjoyable, and I thought it was really good. The other thing I do want to say about this is that as someone who is primarily a fantasy reader, this really gave me the vibe of a John Gwynn. And that's not surprising to me, knowing that John Gwynn is a big historical fiction fan. He talks about um, Miles Cameron, who writes under the name Christian Cameron as a historical fiction writer. He talks about his love for Bernard Cornwell. So it doesn't surprise me that John Gwynn has taken a lot of these historical fiction ideas and moved them into the fantasy realm but I do like it and I, I think that that really helped me get into this historical fiction because it felt very much like John Gwynn's writing style. I felt very at home with it. I love John Gwynn and this writing from Connor Gordon felt very similar. The way we saw different people, the way we interacted with these historical figures felt very, very much like that. And to me that felt at home and definitely set me up to enjoy this book. So yes, Emperor of the Gates of Rome, for me, this was a four and a half star read. Really good characters, good plot, definitely a setup book. It is definitely a book that is the first in the series, is definitely setting us up for big things to happen, and I think he did it really well. At no point did it feel like all setup, no payoff. It didn't drag, I just really enjoyed it. So all in all, yeah, four and a half star read for me. If you want to get into historical fiction, if you love the Romans, give this a read. Now, if you know lots and lots about Roman history, <coughs> Alan, you may have some problems with the historical elements of it, but for me, it captured the feeling well and it was super enjoyable. Definitely a recommend from me. Don't forget to click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you again soon.